Hi everybody, it's Cindy the Scrapologist. I'm here with a tutorial on something I've been experimenting with called pounded flowers. I really love that whole eco paper technique that people have been doing where you boil the paper and whatnot and you get these pretty flower images on your paper, but that's way too many steps for me. Um, running an Etsy shop and having to create while I do the whole business side, I don't have time for like full day long projects and waiting for everything to dry. So I've been trying to get that look in just fewer steps, kind of like my tea staining technique. It's just two steps um, and that's why I love my technique so much. So. Um, so I've been experimenting with this and then while I was thinking about this I came across a vintage book that had different different crafts in it um, like pressed flowers and whatnot but one of the things it had in there was pounding flowers and leaves and so I thought I would give this a try today I've only done it once and so far I absolutely love the uh, way it turned out and so I'm going to do a few of these and experiment with you all today. We can learn as we go along. So this one was this flower, this um, fern <coughs> that I pounded onto a piece of watercolor paper. You can also do this technique on fabric and it's beautiful and I plan on doing that for some covers for my journals. However, the fabric does need some treatment. There are a few extra steps and so that's going to be a separate video and a separate project after I have a chance to experiment with that a little bit. So I went out and got a bunch of leaves today. Just went out in my backyard and it is fall in Maine. We've already had frost. We have no flowers and most of the leaves are dead and dried up at this point but I did find a few little goodies. So we'll, we'll kind of experiment with these together. Um, I have another one of these ferns, so why don't we just start making another one of these. Let me get all the little the dirt and stuff off of here. So <clears throat> it's really easy actually. Just pick, pick a leaf. Let me see if I can find my other fern in my bag here. There's one. Okay, so pick a leaf or a flower and the most interesting side would go down. So actually I'm going to put this side down because it has the stem here and put it down on the paper here and then cover it. Whoopsie! Cover it with a paper towel. You can use plastic wrap, but I think that, I don't know, I might try it, but I think it's going to be too slippery. And with, with a layer of paper towel, I could see, well, you can see here, that I could see that the image was coming through, that it was working. Focus camera. Come on. Is it not focusing? Well, anyway, I think you can... Okay, we just totally went blurry. There we go. Not sure what's happening with the camera today. But you can see that I could tell that the technique was was effective, that, that the um, color pigment in the fern was being hammered out. So the paper towel, I don't mind the paper towel whatsoever. So you put the paper towel over it and you see you can kind of see what you're doing there. And then you just take a hammer. I just have a light hammer here. This I have to get another hammer because the head here is slightly rounded and I think it would be better with a flat hammer. And then you just pound and you don't want to hit hard because then it will just become mud. It will just splatter. You want to hit lightly until you can tell that the pigment is coming out of the plant and keep adjusting your pressure as you hammer. So I'm going to do it now. You might want to turn down your sound a little bit. It's probably going to get noisy.
You can see how it's already starting to come out, come out of the fern. really like that. Should have picked a smaller one for demonstration purposes. <laughs> Definitely want to do this when nobody's around. It's very noisy. I think what I'll do in the future is actually treat my fabric and put the fabric on top and then and then um, sandwich it in between that and a piece of paper because that way with one pound I'll get a piece of fabric and I'll get um, a card too, a sheet of paper with the image on it. This really helps you work out your frustrations too. Okay, there's more to it, but I kind of like the way the stem is isolated down here. So the paper towel looks beautiful, and voila! Oh, I love it. I love it. Look, isn't that so cool? So now... How long did that take? Maybe not. Maybe five minutes plus however long it took me to to go out and collect these leaves, which was a fun walk with my dog anyway. But um, you can really see the detail in the fern. Look at so it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love this. So ferns work really well. I wish I had some colored flowers. I'm just going to be doing leaves today. Let's try another one. And it's just an experiment, really, with whatever you might have in the yard. Let's see. Hmm. What else do I have in here? Okay, let's try this one. This is from a blackberry bush outside. It does have thorns on it, so I'm going to need to be careful. Get a piece of watercolor paper. Um, so, already have some cut. That's good. You want to use paper that is absorbent. You don't. You can't use something like vellum. So watercolor paper works really well, and that's why fabric works w really well. Something that is going to absorb the pigment from the flower. Actually, no. I need a bigger piece of watercolor paper for this. I don't know if regular white cardstock would work. You also don't want something like cardstock that is textured. It needs to be a nice flat paper surface. Let's try this one. And, hmm, which side do I want down? Yeah, I think I want this side down. I don't care as much about the stem on this one. Being careful of those thorns. 
it's kind of cool because the house right behind us, um, about 60 years ago, maybe even 70 years ago, was not a residence. It was a greenhouse. Um, and so there are so many beautiful things that you don't normally just see growing wild back there. So in the spring, I'm going to have a great time looking for goodies to pound. Ow, thorn. And the blackberries back there are crazy. They're either blackberries or huckleberries. I don't know the difference. If you know the difference, write me down below and let me know. Let's see how this one does. Because a lot of these, like I said, are super dried out. So they may or may not work. Let's try it. Nothing's coming through on the paper towel. This one might not work. Well, let me try pounding a little harder. It's turning a little reddish. Yep, this one just requires a little more elbow grease. You know what might be good, too? Ooh, that's going to be beautiful. Probably next time I will take a little bit of washi tape and tape it down because it is moving a little bit. So that might be, we're learning together here. So that's a tip I think that I'll do next time. I'm not going to do the whole thing because I can always set it back down, but let's look. Ooh, it's got some red in there. Love this one. This one's going to be beautiful. Okay, so that's fun. That one will work. I'll finish that one. I'm not going to sit here and pound every one of them and break your poor ears. Let's see what else I have. I thought, I don't know the name of most of these, but I thought this one might be interesting. Yeah, definitely want this side down because it's the one that has all the color. Now when you, I'll do flowers in another video probably, but apparently according to this old book, when you do flowers, sometimes you actually need to take them apart and then lay them out on on the paper. Um, because if you just take a flower and then start smashing it, you're going to end up with a blob of color. So it's kind of a good idea to start with the leaves. They're, they're more, the leaves are all separated for you already. And it's a, it seems to me like an easier way of of learning and experimenting. Let's try this. Let me get another piece of paper towel. I can't really see what I'm doing. I hope some of this red comes out on this one. Oh. This is going to be beautiful.
my arm's getting tired, but I'm so excited to see. I like the smaller head of of the this smaller hammer too. Um because I think if it's a bigger if it's a bigger head, it's gonna kind of splatter, and you can with the smaller head you can kind of control exactly where you're hammering. The stem requires a little bit more pounding. Okay, the moment of truth. The moment of truth, I can't wait. Ah! Oh. Hmm. It looks gorgeous on here, but I mean, it's still kind of cool, but the leaves didn't, didn't pound out. They're probably too dry, but it's still kind of neat. I wonder yeah it's falling apart now I was thinking maybe I could go through and try to fix these a little bit let's just see now you really need that paper towel no these are just too dry I was so excited when I saw this though hmm Maybe in a more absorbent paper, but definitely I'll have to pick up some of these in the spring when they're a little more succulent. But this is still kind of cool. Why not? I like it. Okay, let's try one more. I liked the variegation on these leaves. I thought this might be interesting. So let's give it a try on the other side. And I can see here I've got a bunch of leaves that are moshed together. So you either want to separate those or I think I'm going to pull one of these off and just kind of so there's more separation of the leaves. There we go. paper towel and here we go turn your volume down S super pretty green on the on the paper towel Whoops, hang on. Ugh, I'm pounding so hard that a whole bunch of stamps just fell in the trash can. <laughs> kind of blotchy not sure if it's gonna it kind of splattered I probably shouldn't I probably hit it too hard so I've discovered there's clearly a different um, force that you want to use on the stem than the leaves 
depending on how succulent the stem is and how dry the leaves are. I was pounding on the leaves because they're dry and then I shouldn't have pounded here quite so hard, but we'll see. I've noticed too that it's just kind of doing dots where my hammer is hitting. So if you don't want this dotted look, you want to go through and make sure you get the whole leaf and fill in all those areas where you've pounded. exciting to pull these back and see what you've done. Oh, <laughs> it's completely stuck to the paper. I, I smushied it. Oh, that didn't, this one didn't work. I could have left it on there, I guess. Well, actually, it's not that bad. I mean, if you're not looking for an exact replica of the plant. This one's not too bad. But, meh. Kind of a little messy. So, ow, I just grabbed that. <laughs> I keep forgetting there are thorns on here. I think definitely so far the blackberry leaves and the ferns have worked really well. But I have all kinds of other things. I have a big leaf here. Um, I'm even going to try some dried out berries. Why not? And more blackberries. Be careful, Cindy. Um, I grabbed this, but now that I'm looking at it and now that I've done the technique a little bit, I think that this is going to be too tiny. I probably won't even bother with this one. And then I picked some, I just picked some like regular leaves. Let's just try this really quickly. This will be the last one. Somebody's car horn is going off outside my studio. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's quite annoying. So let's pound away and block out the sound of the car horn. <laughs> and those car horns are so silly. Nobody ever goes running to see if somebody's breaking in. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's hope this one, I hope this one's going to work really well. It's probably too dried out. Yeah, it's too dried out. I'll have to grab some of these in the in the summer. Or at the beginning of the fall before they've all dropped off. So this is quite fun. I'm going to spend the rest of the day doing this and experimenting with some of these. And might run up to the store and get some mums. And at some point, I'm going to get some fabric. And um, I think what I'll do, too, is go through and make sample cards. So each of these will be a sample card and I can keep it in in a little journal or you know somewhere in my studio and label it with the name of the leaf so that I know what works and what doesn't. And um, But experimenting is part of the fun. So thank you for 
experimenting with me today. I hope that you try this. It's lots of fun. I've discovered even in the fall there are lots of things that are that will still work really well. And let me know if you try it and what, what has worked well for you. And at some point I'll do a video doing this on fabric and explain to you how to treat the fabric. Thank you so much for watching. It's been fun. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.